Hello and welcome to my first ever video. I'm Claire Bear and today we're going to be making a toad. Okay, so to start with just some aluminium foil um, balled into the rough shape of the design so, so it really roughly looks like a froggy toady thing. Um, then I'm using some Super Sculpey, that's my polymer clay of choice today. Um, I just ran it through the pasta machine a couple of times because um, I feel like that's the neat cheat on um, conditioning clay, which um, I don't find very much fun if I'm honest, conditioning the clay. So then I take the conditioned polymer clay and add it to the armature. Um, I do this really quickly and I'm probably not doing it in the right way, but um, like for me, adding the clay to the armature isn't the fun bit, so I probably don't take as much time as I should. Um, and I can see tiny holes as I'm adding it sometimes. Sorry, not holes, um, air bubbles. I think that's what they are, they look like tiny blisters underneath. So I'm just using the cocktail stick because I'm working so quickly, I'm sort of accidentally sealing air in there, I think. Um, I've never had any problem in the oven, but I'm super wary of um, destroying a piece in the oven because of air bubbles. So I'm just taking the toothpick, um, allowing the air to escape and then sealing the holes again with my fingers so that you can't see them. Yeah, and then just really working with the shape until it starts to take the form of something uh, believable. So I just added, um, they look like little bits of ham I think sometimes, um, just adding small sheets of flat clay um, and placing them one over the other over the other until I've got the rough height and shape of the head that I want and then blending it all in uh, using the cocktail stick to release any air bubbles. There we go, just, just adding a bit more, still not quite happy with the shape. For me it needed a little bit more, but it's super rough. Some more air bubbles, letting the air out. There we go. For me, I think it's starting to come together now. Um, in my head, I can begin to see a frog or toad emerging from the lump of clay. Yep, happy with that base shape. Cool. Okay, so now we've got our base shape. I'm just gonna start to add a little bit more detail. So adding the limbs on, the arms and legs and the eyes. So I'm just rolling out a couple of sausages and bending them into the rough shape of a frog or toad. I wanna keep it quite um, cartoony. So I'm not going for overly realistic. I wanna add a bit of character to it. And in the background, I'm using, I don't think you can quite see it properly in shot, but I'm using um, a tablet for reference. I've got frog, actual pictures of frogs and toads in the background. And then I'm just, um, I put the eye on there so that for me, it helps hold the, um, the believability of the character together. So I'm not going to leave the eye as it is on there now, but whilst I'm trying the legs on, I want to see them with the face, how it all goes together. It's probably not the right way of doing it, but um, but that's how I did it. So, reshaping the legs. Not quite happy with the size and shape, so I'm just redoing them. More sausages, <laughs> bending them. And uh, holding them on his butt. There you go, blending them in. So that they're no longer sausages floating on his sides. And 
and then doing something similar for the front arm. So I'm just leaving these on there at the moment really roughly. So there's no no detail in them, just um just for the rough shape so that I can in my head bring this character to life. So um just going to add a bit more detail here, pop the eyes on. I've used um 6mm cabochons that I have painted the back of. Um, and they're flat on one side, obviously, unlike a, an actual eyeball. So I'm just rolling two balls of clay together, testing the size, making sure I'm happy with it. Um, and I'm going to stick the cabochons on the balls of clay. The arms and legs are just on there roughly, so the front arms don't look much like arms at the moment. Um, but I'm going to go back and add the detail later. And I'm worried that the arms are going to be in the way as I'm working on it. So I want to be able to take them off. I don't want to add the detail on too much at the moment and then ruin it by having to take them off or work around them. And I'm using my reference to just double check I'm not completely fabricating how frog eyes actually sit on frogs. So I don't want it to be an exact replica of a frog, but um, it needs to be a believable shape for me. That's what I was going for. So I've got to, just using one of my um, polymer clay tools. It's actually my favourite tool to use. Um, I use it when my finger's too big to fit into the blending space. Having a go with the fingers, but yeah, they don't really get in there as well as that. And then just uh, smoothing it after with my finger. He looks a bit derpy, but I kind of like that definitely feel like you can tell what it is now. You can probably guess that's a frog, right? And then um, just adding a little bit more detail by rolling some more snakes of clay, little sausages, and um, putting them on the front of the cabochons and blending them in, kind of like an upper and lower eyelid. Um, two reasons one because it's a little bit more detailed a, a bit more believable but also to hold the cabochon in place so I'm not using um, any other adhesive so I'm super hoping that once I bake it the eyelids actually keep the cabochon in place So just blending those um, snakes of clay in. Checking I'm happy with the shape. I feel like um, I should definitely apologise because most of most of the cam camera angle is actually my hand. I need to work on videos, I think. I apologise. So um, I'm just removing the arms at the front and I'm going to add the lips, making his mouth. So I'm just rolling out some sausages and then playing with the shape, adding them on. Trying to make them into a bit of a cartoony frog, frog mouth.
just continuing to um, blend the lip in. So somewhere here it stops looking like a sausage and starts looking like a lip, but we're not quite there yet. So more blending, more poking, more smoothing. Super careful not to smoosh his eyes as I'm doing it and keeping an eye on the overall shape, just making sure I'm not losing the overall shape of the frog or toad. I had like loads of fun making the frogs because um, their whole shape is not very refined and it's very forgiving. It's not like making a small human head where, um, you know, one one accidental smoosh and the whole thing, you know, you've lost the shape. I think sometimes with these guys, when when I was making them, um, the, the smooshes and stuff gave me happy accidents sometimes. Using a ball stylus to help me blend, just like I would do with my finger if I could fit the fat rascals in there, which I couldn't. So going over the top after to try and blend. I definitely think um, that the bigger something is, the easier it is to clay. And I reckon this guy's kind of small, so I'm finding it a bit difficult to put the details on, but not too difficult because He's a frog. So I skipped a little bit. Um, you might notice that he's got some nostrils, uh, his lower lips on, and um, one of his arms. So I'm just going to show you how I did the arm um, on the other side. It's not the best footage, so I apologise again. I need to work on my video skills. Um, I'm using the same arm um, that he had on initially. Um, I've cut some more armature for that. I'm using cocktail sticks that um, I've cut tiny bits off. And I'm rolling sausages around the armature and then poking the armature into the feet so that those hopefully become believable toes, toad toes. To do the nostrils, I just balled up two small pieces of clay and then I blended those into the froggy toad's face and then I poked some holes into them. Having a bit of trouble with uh, the toad toes because they're so small. And again, it's not the best ever shot, so I'm super sorry. I've only done um, three fingers on each feet for the frog because um, I feel like I'm not particularly good at making hands and feet and I don't particularly enjoy it. And also the fourth finger or toe or whatever you want to call it would be underneath the frog so you wouldn't actually see it. So it's just a su suggestion really. This guy's not going to be overly detailed when I've finished. kind of like him being a bit rough. So still playing with the toes. I've left them um, a flat piece of clay underneath um, because I'm hoping that that will provide the web in between the toes. So on my other ones, previously I did it the other way around. I put the toes on and then um, I used a flat piece of clay and blended it from the top. But I wasn't overly pleased with the toes on that. So this time when I made it, um, I used just used the original arm that had been flattened and then on top of that I put the toes and blended them in and actually I think that worked a bit better.
adding a bit of detail onto the arm, giving a bit of wrinkly skin around the elbow, trying him on for size, tucking his toes. Is it a good fit? Yes, no. Not too bad. Quite pleased with that one. A bit more blending on the back. Yeah, happy with that foot. Just going to show you how I did the back foot roughly. So I um, flattened out a piece of clay into a rough foot shape and some small pieces of cocktail stick, covered the cocktail stick in clay um, and then placed them on top to give the illusion of webbed toes and blended it all in. Here I've just added some liquid clay, it's actually Fimo liquid, um, to reinforce those toes and also poked a small bit of wire in the top of that foot so that um, when it sits on the frog it will just give it a bit of extra grip and you won't see that wire. Like so. There we go, and I'm going to go ahead and do the other one off camera to save a bit of time. Here he is with his arms and feet attached. You can see, I think he's a believable frog toad coming together there. I feel like um, he's a little bit naked, so I'm going to add some warts and some more texture to his skin. So to do that, I'm just boiling up bits of clay and sticking them really roughly onto the torso and the limbs. Kind of want to add to his character, give him another dimension. Get some over-exaggerated warts going on. So just boiling up bits of clay, sticking them on until I'm happy with it. Now that the warts are all on and I'm happy with how many we've got and where they are, I'm going to go ahead and further texturize the skin using a small ball stylus and I'm just further accentuating the warty porous skin of a frog or toad and I'm going to go ahead and do that over the whole of the body and the arms and legs just working in some extra detail and I'm really happy with how this looks. It's giving it an extra dimension, I think, bringing the whole character to life. Once he's done, I've done the whole whole of the skin. I'm going to pop him on a baking tray, cover him in foil, and pop him in the oven. And here he is baked. So all I'm going to do now is paint him, and we're done. So. I don't find painting particularly easy um, and I've previously used Fimo, uh, coloured Fimo and not really painted um, any of my makes before so this is a new experience for me and um, I actually find it really difficult um, and I'm not sure I like the process so 
I haven't kept everything of the painting in just because um, I don't feel like I do it very well. Um, so basically the first thing I did on this was paint his feet, a lighter colour um, and his tummy. And then I'm going in with a black paint over the top. Um, the black paint is a little bit watered down so that it's running into all of the um, nooks and crannies, the stippled pore effect that we made on the clay. There we go. That's that bit all done. And then before I move on to the next stage, just super making sure that this project is completely dry. So there's no wet paint, because if the paint is still a bit damp on the next stage, it will um, ruin it. After um, completing the black, I'm just going to go in over the top with um, some shiny green paint. I'm not adding any water to the paint um, and it's just a tiny bit of paint on the brush. I want to add it to the surface and where we've textured it with the ball stylus, um, I'm hoping it's going to stay a bit black underneath and really make those um, warty pores stand out on the toad. So I'm being careful not to add too much paint and over green everything. So I'm going to take my time and um, cover the whole of the black like, like this. It doesn't matter um, if it gets on the eyes um, because they're made of glass and when the paint dries it'll be easy enough to scratch that right off again. I did forget to paint the feet on camera so I also go back and just give um, a slightly bronzy metallic to the tummy and the feet because um, I thought it looked better than um, than that stark cream that was uh, kind of an undercoat really and then um, and then we're just about done Here we are all finished. Um, thank you very much for watching. Please let me know what you think underneath in the comment section.